there are many varieties of plants and animals on earth which are very essential for the well-being and uh, survival of mankind. Trees give out oxygen which all animals and human beings require for respiration. Now the survivability of these organisms are, are at a threat because of deforestation. Deforestation is the clearing of forests and using this land for various purposes such as cultivation, building up of houses and factories, and using the wood to make furniture or use it as fuel. Now, trees take up carbon dioxide for photosynthesis. So lesser number of trees due to deforestation would mean lesser amount of carbon dioxide being taken up by the plants. And this is equal to more amount of carbon dioxide present in the atmosphere. This causes global warming because carbon dioxide traps the heat that is reflected by the earth. Deforestation also causes air pollution. Deforestation is the major cause that changes the properties of soil. Yes, because of deforestation and lesser number of trees, the topmost layer of soil which contains humus and is fertile becomes loose and gets eroded. And the more rocky layers that contains less amount of humus and is less fertile gets exposed. So fertile lands get transformed into deserts and this is known as desertification. Now forests are homes to a lot of animals. They provide shelter to these animals. Now if we cut down forests, then what will, they, what will happen to these wild animals? How will they survive? Plus, we also get a lot of uh, products from the forests. What about them? Now, apart from the efforts taken up by individuals and society, government has also laid down various rules and policies for the conservation of forests and wildlife. Biosphere reserve Wildlife sanctuaries and national parks are protected areas by government for the conservation of forest and wildlife. Biosphere reserve is a large area of protected land for conservation of wildlife, plants, animal resources and the life of tribals living in that area. Two most famous biospheres present in India is the Sundarban biosphere that is present in West Bengal and the Nilgiri biosphere that is present in Tamil Nadu. Wildlife sanctuary is areas where animals and their habitat are protected from any kind of disturbance. Two most famous sanctuaries present in India is the Bhadra sanctuary present in Karnataka, and the Periyar Wildlife Sanctuary, present in Kerala. Areas reserved for wildlife where they can freely use the environment, the habitat, and the natural resources is known as the national parks. Like the Kaziranga National Park that is present in Assam, which is famous for the rhinos, and the Corbett National Park that is famous for its tigers. Now these protected areas contain many species of animals that are found only in those areas. They are not naturally found anywhere else. These species are known as the endemic species. Like this grey fowl that is present only in the forests of North India and the Malabar giant squirrel that is only found in the Malabar coast. Now this Malabar giant squirrel is endangered. That is, its number has decreased to a level that it might face extinction in the near future. These are known as the endangered animals and a few other endangered animals are snow leopards 
and the Siberian tigers. These endangered animals have their names in the red data book, which is the source book that keeps all the data of endangered plants and endangered animals. Now the best answer for deforestation is reforestation, which is the restocking of lost or cut out plants by planting new plants. So reforestation requires conservation of soil because growing the same crop year after year depletes the soil of its nutrients. So to replenish the soil, different crops should be planted in alternative seasons. For example, suppose a farmer plants leguminous plants such as peas in one season, he should alternate it with cereals like rice in the next season. Now, again, in the following season, he should follow it up with leguminous plants because leguminous plants have nodules in their roots and these nodules house nitrifying bacteria that fixes atmospheric nitrogen for the plants. So these plants increase the fertility of the soil. Now, not only this, growing two or more crops together or leaving the field barren because uh, microorganisms can act on the soil and increase the nutrient value, as well as adding manure from outside increases the fertility or the nutritive value of soil. Now, soil is not the only requirement for agriculture. Another essential factor is water. Now, we know that trees help in raining. So deforestation along with overusage of surface water by irrigation, domestic purposes, and surface water pollution has caused a grave shortage of water. So there is an immediate need to conserve water, and that can be done through rainwater harvesting. This can be done domestically by collecting rainwater that runs off from the roof and can be collected in an underground reservoir so that this rainwater can be utilized for other purposes such as irrigation. Now, tractors are used for agriculture and tractors require fossil fuels such as coal and petroleum. Now, the progress of any country depends on the amount of energy it has, and the main, uh, main source of this energy is fossil fuels. So there is an immediate requirement to conserve fossil fuels. So we need to see what other alternative sources of energy we can have. Well, one alternative source of energy in which man is now looking into is hydroelectric energy or energy generated from water. Water is collected behind a dam that is built across a river. Then water at a very high pressure is released into the pipes and this high pressure of water turns the turbines which are connected to the generators that produces electricity. Another source of energy that can be utilized is the solar energy or the energy from the sun. Well, solar energy can be utilized directly for heating and this heating energy can be converted into electrical energy. People of the rural areas widely depend on biomass energy. What is biomass energy? Well, energy obtained from biomass, which is a mixture of dry leaves, stems, twigs, and cakes of cattle dung. Now what is done is 
this biomass is converted into biogas which is commonly known as gobar gas this gobar gas has an excessive amount of a gas known as methane which can be used as a fuel for domestic purposes and finally wind energy can also be harvested and can be used or transformed into mechanical energy as well as electrical energy so these are all the alternative forms of energy which we should utilize for a sustainable future